with All this. Right. Those are my notes. Well, let's get to the articles. We've got five on deck. Uh, we've read a little bit already from a couple, but uh, go ahead, Brian. I'll let you kick off wh- wherever you want to. System of a Down, not exactly for the people. Interview Darren Malakian. Yeah, this out. is from guitar.com. Uh, and yeah, it's just guitar.com speaking directly to Darren. Okay, go ahead. But love just um, this is why I want to hear soil for everybody. The band before System of Down, I don't think was a bad garage band. We were pretty cool. We were called Soil. The sound of that band had a lot to do with the sound of uh, this band. Soil was like mixing Rush, Zappa, Slayer, Pantera, Soundgarden, and everything you can think of together in these 10-minute song structures that started off this way and ended the other way. We were a really good band. It spawned a lot of the style that System is now. That is that sounds like the worst music ever made. <laughs> Rush, Zappa, Slayer, Pantera, and Soundgarden. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like I, I, I have to hear it because it sounds terrible. Yeah, no, I, yeah, we will, I'm sure we'll get to Soil at some point. I had another quote from this I loved. This to me was such a Lars Ulrich coded quote. Like, if you told me that Lars said this, I would be like, I believe you 100%. Uh, Guitar.com says, you're more concerned with the big picture. Uh, And then he says, the pure satisfaction of coming up with something new. That's what I want to do. I want to make a difference. It may sound cheesy. If it does, fuck you. Because I'm not into cheese, but I'm very into art. (laughs) I was just like, come on, dude. <laughs> what I'm does very, that even mean? You know, I'm very into art. If you say it's cheesy, fuck you. Because I'm not into cheese. But I am I'm, into art. I'm such a big art guy. And I love art, dude. I don't I don't like cheese at all. Uh, I have... Uh, I, I think the last thing I really have for this is... Uh, uh, first of all... It's just hilarious. They pigeonhole us as a political band, yet we sing about everything, like from suicide to fucking love to politics <laughs> to drugs. We sing about everything. We don't limit our issues and don't limit our music. That's the problem. I get when people come up to us and talk about being a political band. People ask me, what does system of a down mean? Everyone wants everything written down for them. It's like, what does it mean for you? You figure it out. What's that song about? The lyrics are pretty abstract. You make your own thing of it. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. Appreciate it. That's very, I, that is something I think the comedian brain or the, the, the comedian brain in me can't ever like, like figure out that, that no, I'm not going to explain anything to you. You just got to figure it out for yourself. I just, that all the musicians from this time period are so obsessed with, oh, well, why would I explain it to you? Yeah, because we want to fucking know. Doesn't it make it like, can't you just You're making like, art and people are curious about your art? How is that and, surprising to you? Like, they always act like they're surprised by the question, too. What What do you mean? What does system of a down mean? It's like, they're did you so, not think people would wonder about your very odd band name? They're so curious about you that they're <laughs> asking you questions about your thing. And you're like, eat shit. Just whatever it is, you know. Yeah, leave me a leave me the fuck, fuck alone. Yeah, and then the last is this the article where I think the last thing I wrote was like, oh yeah, here it is, guitar.com. People are more comfortable when the world around them can be interpreted in simple black and white terms, no matter how many shades of gray there really are. Darren goes, I don't like people in general. I think they're stupid, <laughs> and it's like, oh well. I mean, I just read a bunch of interviews with Darren, and I gotta say, I think he's stupid. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I Again, it's just such a generic, like, it's very funny that he spends a lot of this interview talking about not wanting to be generic, but then it's kind of generic to just be like, people are stupid, man. Uh, I you think know. people are stupid, man. And you know, I, 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 I that is a young man thing to say. Yes, number one. for sure. You, you will say that when you're, <laughs> when you're young, you think you have something figured out that the world doesn't. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so I get it. Um, so then I, I did the lazy eye. Interview. Okay. Yeah. So this one is an interview with Shavo uh, from lazy eye. It's from November 21st, 1999. I guess I was just kind of blown away with this. So where do you think, what do you think is driving this return to heavy music? 
there's just a lot of good bands out there. There's a lot of crap, too. The kids know what's going on. If you're a teenager, you have some anger or confusion that makes you want to release the tension. Not in a bad way, just letting loose emotion. And heavy music does that. All the young fans that were in Nirvana and Pearl Jam are into Cold Chamber and Limp Biscuit, so things haven't really changed. That is not true. That is no. I can't think of people did not just less switch true. from Nirvana to Cold Chamber. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really uh... I, the most untrue. Rage and Tool were doing it in '92, and heavy music was dead. They came out and proved everybody wrong. They were the forefathers of the new heavy music. Corn broke it to the extreme mainstream where a heavy band can sell as many albums as the Backstreet Boys. Every band has a place in the music scene unless they're a cheap sellout. Selling out is when you change your music to change album sales. Selling out is not writing good music. It's all about honesty. We'll keep on doing what we want to do and living out the dream. Now, let me let me explain why I, I read this. Uh, I saw them in fucking the Mesmerized Tour or whatever, and they kind of went off on the same thing. Oh, people making music so fucking MTV plays it. And, you know, they, they kind of are so focused on not being sellouts that I kind of feel sorry for them <laughs> in a way, in that way, because they're just really nervous about anybody suggesting that. And I don't think it's a band that could sell out, really. I mean, I guess they could sell their music to a commercial, but. I don't know how many change like it would take an overhaul of everything for them to, you know, sell out. I don't know how they would write music as sellouts, you know? Totally. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, and system would be, they, they almost couldn't sell out because it would be so obvious. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like they're, they're political. So they would have to get rid of that. They would have to change their songwriting. Like, there would be to them like when you sell out it's ostensibly to make more money system was making so much oh, money. Yeah. like they would actually have lost money by quote unquote selling out at the time yes um yeah. yeah i didn't have a ton from this one other than i thought this last quote was very funny uh you know we, you and i both love uh things that are almost certainly made up and this is one of those ones for me uh the the interviewer asked uh did you get busted by the cops uh, and he says i don't know what have you heard and then the interviewer says i haven't heard anything i just assume part of this lifestyle means having to deal with cops which i don't think so really but okay uh and chavo says we're all good boys we don't get into trouble I had a couple of fans smoking pot around me at one show and a guard came and had a badge pretending he was a cop and he wanted to throw the kids out of the concert. I took the blame. I said it was mine, even though it wasn't. I didn't want the kids to miss Ozzy. I got handcuffed to a wall and I was there until Ozzy's daughter came and rescued me. When you see a bald dude with a goatee, cops expect trouble. I realize that. When I get home, I get pulled over once or twice a week but I've managed to stay out of trouble. Oh my God. That reminds me. Buddy, you are not getting pulled over twice a week because you're bald and have a goatee. (laughs) Get lost. That just really brought back a fucking thing. I used to say into my brain that makes me incredibly uncomfortable is that like, I probably had to be 19 or 20 when I was saying this stuff, but I was like, you know, You hear a lot about black guys saying that people follow them around the store and like pretend like act like they think they're they're uh, shoplifting. And that happens a lot with me because of how I dress and look, I like have this heavy metal look. Right. And uh, which I did get pulled out of the car and searched a lot because I look like a sleaze bag. But also I could have fucking put on different clothes. And they would have left me alone, you know, but I did. That just reminded me of that. And yes, he's lying. I have the next, (laughs) the the next one I have is from uh, the high school one. Yes. Yeah. So this was, it seems like I don't have any date here because it's from like a, an angel fire website that compiled these old interviews, but I did see it referenced in a couple other articles. So it is real. Um, and yeah, Darren and Serge went to the same Armenian school in California, um, but they went, they're like eight years age difference. So they didn't know each other from the school, but it seems like his school newspaper uh, 
yeah, interviewed him when System of a Down was uh, was starting to pop off. So this is that interview. Go ahead. I'd love if Groveport High School asked me to do an interview. That would be great. Yeah, why not? Right? It'd be very cool. Yeah, I'm on the uh, notable alumni page at least. Are you? Um, wow. I think I am. I, actually, I was, and then somebody that I went to high school with that doesn't like me, I mean, taken off. <laughs> that is very funny. Because I made him mad. Um, oh, because he was complaining about them playing rap music at football games ah, on Facebook. And I was like, okay. I was like, you used to listen to fucking Cannibal Corpse. Don't sit around telling me. <laughs> you didn't tell anybody. Um, this cracked me up, man. Darren's big complaint is that radio stations play too many. Systems. Yes. This is one of the best quotes we've ever read. <laughs> It turned down so many things in the last year. It's crazy. He says, even a prestigious Grammy Awards got a turn down from the band. They wanted us to sing aerials on the live telecast last month. And quiet, quite frankly, it says quiet, frankly, I didn't flub. Quite frankly, we just weren't interested. That's something in Seek and Britney Spears do, not System of a Down. Malaki and his specific. Oh, then it's just them doing the, we're not an Armenian band, we're a rock band. So uh, I really love that line uh, about, we turned down the prestigious Grammy Awards. So, you know, we're not even close to selling out. <laughs> prestigious Grammys. That's for Britney Spears and NSYNC. That's not for System of a Down. Do you think System of a Down got asked to play the Grammys? Yes. You do? Okay. I mean, yeah, because heavy big stuff. Enough, I, I could buy it. Yeah, because they were trying to have some heavy stuff on everything back then. Yeah, were, I can buy that. And I think that album got nominated for the Grammy. Might have even won, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I, I believe it. I, I do think it's funny to say you turned it down, though, which, yeah. You know, and just the way of saying it. You could just be like, yeah, you know, we didn't really want to play the Grammy. Is to say it like, that's for Britney Spears and NSYNC. That's not for... Yeah, we really don't want to play the prestigious Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> not for me. No, I don't. I don't like it. You know, I don't really. I don't care. Uh, wow, this is really funny. I'm looking at the page for toxicity, and it's listing all the accolades, and it's talking about like all these different, like, oh, Rolling Stone ranked it number one of the hundred best albums of the decade, and this and that, whatever. And one of them is Spice Girl. Melanie C picked it as one of her favorite albums. Oh, that's cool. So Mel, Mel, C, Mel big, C, big toxicity head. I don't know which one she is, but that's cool. Sporty. Yeah, Mel C is, is, old, is big old sporty spice. Oh, so she's working out. And it's good workout. Oh, yeah. Music, I guess. So the next, I don't know if you have anything oh, yeah, else. Chop Suey know? was listed. It was nominated for best uh, new metal, or sorry, best metal performance. Oh, I think the best Suey. new metal award. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. They'd probably let us, they should let us uh, present it. Presenting. Yeah. Uh, I just had this other funny thing, which I do, you know, he he very much is this interview. And again, I would I would probably do this too, because you know, if this is my old high school interviewing me, it's almost like going to a high school reunion where I get like I get, you know, wanting to brag to people who maybe oh, yeah. attend your school, but he just says, and it's apropos of nothing, like for fans, it will be a long wait for the band's fourth album. Malakian estimates he and his bandmates won't begin recording the new album until sometime in 2004. Quote, I have been working hard on it, and I have written tons of songs, but I'm a perfectionist. It's never good enough. And then for some reason, he just starts talking. Like, he just starts saying, I go to Starbucks or the supermarket, and people follow me home, and then they pretend that they just happen to be driving down my very secluded street and just happen to bump into me, and I've had people leave notes in my mailbox and girls knock on my door at 3.30 in the morning. It's so crazy. And by the way, I'm incredibly famous. So I don't By know the way, you know. I'm just really famous. And then I also did like this. Uh, Malakian says he skipped many high school activities, including his senior prom, but he did have his senior picture taken for the yearbook. Quote, you got to do that. You got to leave your mark somehow. You know, John, I just found out I don't think I did have my senior picture <laughs> taken for the you, yearbook. You didn't leave a mark, Brian. I fucking didn't come to school that day, of course. Of course. I didn't go to school any days, ever. Um, yeah, that's pretty funny. Just The next one I have is from Metal Edge. System of a Down, Quirky is as Quirky does. 
Yeah, this is a profile from uh, Metal Edge magazine uh, from December 1999. I have to read this, and this is not them saying something, but it killed me. But their music and lyrics go beyond their heritage. Just as, say, Ted Nugent is an articulate and an <laughs> opinionated speaker who leans toward the right politically. Can you believe we used to live in a world where guys were just able to say that? And just, nobody just would say be like, it. he's a moron. He sucks. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, that's that's what I have. I think I have a couple like them talking about hip hop. I I think the reason I like this one is because it's Surge, and he'll say something like this: "I respect Corn and a lot of other bands for for what they've done for what they've done and achieved in their realm." Like <laughs> it's so weird to call something somebody's. This is your realm. It's yeah. like very Renaissance. -y. It's in our realm. Yeah, uh, I think I, I think the only other thing I have from here is the very strange, the oldest man in the world thing he says. People are affected by what we're saying, so it's good. I've had arguments with certain people, Reaganites and stuff like that. This is 1998. <laughs> Reaganites. But Reagan hasn't been president for 10 years yeah. when he did it. In front of kids at signing booths and things, because I say my piece and believe in what I say. And if other people don't like it and say so, then I'll argue with them about it with respect to their attitudes. So there are people who are definitely listening and kids are more impressionable and hearing the message. My message is overwhelmingly of peace. I want to stop wars. I want things to be like they were when humanity was formed in its original ritualistic style. <laughs> Oh yeah, what Surge is, Surge is, is on his own. He's on his own plane of existence. Yeah. I feel. Like. <laughs> I no idea what any of that meant. It's just crazy. I, I don't know that. I guess before society, we were that much more civilized than we are now. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this was this one made me laugh as well, and not I. This I actually kind of believe happened, uh, but. It is also just gives you an insight into like just the way that Surge thinks. Uh, it's interesting you will debate with someone yet remain respectful of their views because it seems like that idea of respect for others' beliefs has been lost to a certain extent. <laughs> Surge. Oh, yeah. At one of our shows in D.C., this 40-something guy came up to me and said something like, how dare you disrespect the American people and the American flag and this and that. This was at a signing booth. There's hundreds of kids there, and he was literally yelling at me across the table. So I said, I'm not disrespecting the American people or the American flag. I'm disrespecting the government and the military industrial complex that's making you do things you don't really want to do. And he's like, well, that's the people that save your ass and allow you to be here and do this and that. And I'm like, really? Who's attacked us lately? We're the ones bombing people everywhere else. So next thing he gets in my face and he's yelling at me standing up. And I didn't stand up. Not that I was afraid. I wasn't. But I didn't need to. I didn't need to show him my machismo. Instead, I said to him, if you're a real man, why don't you come sit next to me like a real man? Here's a chair. I'll offer it to you. Why don't you talk to me face to face if you really have something to say? He agreed, and he came and sat next to me, and we talked for an hour and a half. By the end, he said he was going to come see us again and wanted backstage passes. Laughs. He still didn't agree with what we were saying, but he thought we were a good band. We're all here, and we all have things we believe in because of our own lives and past experiences. And I'm not really going to change that guy's mind about what he believes in, but I gave him my point of view without trying to disrespect him. And I'm like, dude, you're in a famous band. You do not need to talk to some 45 year old guy for an hour and a half. About yeah, no, that's you're fine. You you actually do not at all have to do that. That's a waste of that's a waste of your time and his actually. His, also. Yeah, also his. Even though I hate everything he probably believes, it's still a waste of his yeah, time. You both wasted each other's time. And finally, Metal Hammer. Yeah, this, never is, the, this is the like last we, one. This is, yeah, we never felt like we were in anybody's scene. How System of a Down invaded New Metal, baited Slayer fans, and created a classic debut album in 1998. This is by John Wiederhorn. Uh, and this is a 25-year uh, retrospective. So it was published uh, in July of 2023. One, they did not bait Slayer fans. They just... I told them to chant Slayer while they were on stage. So well, no, they baited them by playing the same song over and over again, which is oh. insanely stupid. Yeah, uh, this is Darren says. Uh, uh, I'd encourage Slayer fans to heckle us, and if they weren't yelling Slayer by the middle of our show, I'd call them a bunch of pussies. 
Mm. I wanted to give them a bit of a hard time before they gave us a hard time. Uh, and then it talks about Slayers didn't really necessarily like them, Slayers fans. After a frustrating show in Berlin in which the audience remained nonplussed at the sight of these four Armenian Americans cavorting around the stage, Darren told his bandmates that he had a plan. I said, look, if these guys don't applaud for us after we play the first song, no, we're going to play it again over and over until they react. He said in 2014, we played no and the crowd was pretty silent. So John started no again and we all played it halfway through the song. They were actually cheering for us. My attitude was you're going to love us whether you like it or not. And if you don't, you're going to hear this song over and over again. And that fucking stinks. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible for the people that wanted to see him. Uh, this is just a funny line. When we write music, we try to do something different than even what we do. <laughs> <laughs> in 1998, just before the band's debut album. I'm serious. We want every new song to be done in a way we haven't done before. We try not to sound like System of a Down, let alone anyone else. That keeps us as not only a step ahead, but a step ahead of ourselves. That is crazy. It's so good. I'm just imagining them like jamming out in the practice space and then Surge being like, that song's too System of a Down. We got yeah. to change that, guys. We got to be a step ahead of ourselves. We have to be. <laughs> that is, yeah. I mean, that one was so funny. I also loved all the stuff. So we uh, <clears throat> we had reviewed uh, one song by The Apex Theory, uh, which is a band that spawned out of System of a Down because Andy Kachurian, uh, or sorry, Kachaturian, was the drummer for System of a Down originally, and then he went on to form The Apex Theory, and this is just like a very funny way to lose millions of dollars. Uh, so while Andy Kachaturian was a great drummer, he was something of a loose cannon. At one point, he hooked up with a woman who already had a boyfriend. When the boyfriend confronted him, fists flew and the drummer wiped the floor with his opponent. Who's telling that story? Anyway, yeah. when the dust cleared, the boyfriend filed assault charges. And at the end of one of the band's sets, police stormed the stage and hauled the drummer off. Anticipating worsening problems, System asked their friend John Dolmayan if he would learn the drum parts if they needed someone to fill in for a few shows. If their regular drummer wasn't able to play them, it wasn't long before the situation changed permanently. Quote, Andy ended up getting into a fight and punched a wall and shattered every bone from his fingers all the way up to his elbow so he couldn't play drums, recalled Darren. Shava was the one who found out, and when he told me, I turned to him right away and said, call John and tell him he's in. I didn't even stutter, and he fit in right away because he's a great drummer, he knew the songs, and it was an extra plus that he was Armenian. So, yeah, yeah imagine you lose out on being in one of the more successful bands of your era because you punched a wall and broke your hand. I love wall punchers. They always crack me <laughs> up. That is something I always laugh at, so I, I did like that. Yeah, really good stuff.